I'm going to clean up all our little parts here and stuff. So I clean up all the stuff that's in here, wipe everything off of here. I'm going to have to give me some petroleum jelly to lubricate these O-rings. Some of these have residue on them, look like uh, petroleum jelly on them, Vaseline. Other stuff looks like it's dry, so I'm not sure what's supposed to be what. I'm going to go look in my instructions and see if I can find something online. I'm probably going to tell you very much, but uh, I'll take a look see. So I went ahead and wiped all this stuff off. So I blew out all the cavities and holes and stuff. Get everything cleaned out that I can. So it's not a major deal, it's just a matter of a little manual labor. Everybody asks, what do you do to clean stuff? Just wipe it out. Works good. So I'm just using my uh, already semi-dirty rag. Making it dirtier. So like I said, I'm not sure what I'm supposed to do because I have no instructions. I can only look at what's in here and guess. So first thing I do is look at your surfaces and see is there any kind of lubricant on here? There's no lubricant in this thing at all. So this one I would guess is probably dry. That's how it's supposed to be. Other things had lubricant in them, so like I said, you just kind of got to feel it by ear. Take your best guess scenario, what you want, and go with that. See, how's a build up right there. It's kind of dried up, sealer type thing. See, that's enough to make things not work. Maybe this old petroleum jelly was in there. See, there's a groove in there, there's a mark. So that's residue, like maybe at one time it might have had a little petroleum jelly in there. You can smell stuff too, but that's probably my rag. <laughs> I think that's my rag. So anyway, so I just wipe this all out clean. Run your fingers around, make sure it feels smooth. There you go, it's clean. So this here is a seal that goes in there. So it's got a bunch of dirt and stuff all over it. So just go over here and blow on a little bit. This is my regulated air pressure here. Blow off the loose stuff. Then you go back to wiping. It's just manual labor. But you got to pay attention. Cleaning is a very important process. You got to identify what's going on. The residue on there tells you kind of what was on it. This one looks just to be very, very dry. I don't see any kind of residue really to speak of. You got a little bit of goo right here. That's it. So that might be all that's left over all the years. This is from 99. Who knows how many times it's been used. It's used enough that it had a broken part in it, so I mean, it had to be used quite a bit. So I would think a little petroleum jelly on this stuff here would make it work a lot freer and easier. And but whether it's supposed to be coated or not, I don't know. See a little roughness in here. See the scratches in there? That's going to be a leakage issue. Right there, I got some junk in there, obviously. So what do you do to clean that up? Knock off the titties. You don't want to put sandpaper on here because that induces grit into your surfaces, which might never go away. It's, it's in there, you can see it, so. You want to try to make it smoother, not make it worse. Basically, all you can just wipe off the heavy stuff and then uh, you probably rub something across the surface to kind of burnish it in a little bit, maybe. A little piece of plastic or something like that. You just kind of rub against it to knock it down. Over here, I got a nice steel workbench down here. So you can do stuff like this. It's kind of running around. You can hear it going across the surface. This is burnishing. That means you're just rubbing with pressure to make it smooth. All right. After you do that, you wipe it off again. This is that bad area. It's 
with it a lot smoother than it was. For the aluminum, if you got scratch, you can take a little fine file and hit it, but you don't don't put that on a ceiling surface; it'll destroy it. Do that one more time. parts to rebuild anything with so you gotta make the stuff you got good again. Okay that's pretty smooth now I don't feel any real high spots in it like it was. You can see where the scratches were right through here but it's not uh, it's not rough anymore. Alright that's good to go. Alright that's all the major stuff, the little hardware stuff I'm not too concerned about. We already cleaned these plungers up a little bit. So these should have some kind of jelly on these, I would think. Make them smoother. Make them operate better. So it's a pretty simple pump, so... Not... Not much to go wrong with it. As long as all the seals work, we should be good. This doesn't look all that scratched up, so... Yeah, so that's pretty good. Alright, um... A little small stuff needs to be cleaned up some more. These are pretty rusty, corroded. So this here, I'll probably put a little CRC on this area here. It'll break down the rust a little bit. Take your thumbnail, run it down the thread. And just rotate the bolt. That'll clean the thread out. See all the grit came off my hands there. Made a big difference. Do it again. Stainless steel spring. Yep. A lot of corrosion and crap in the hole there, so. so again, fill it full of CRC. So it rotates one way, not the other, so just rotate the direction it rotates. Jump cleaned out. Pretty nasty looking. I'm going to blow it out over here. That's cleaned off again. You notice I left the dirtiest shit for the end because the rag gets dirty. Same thing, run your. It's time to run the rag, the fingernail with the rag on it through the threads. Clean them out pretty good. Is there a spring? Run your fingernails through the spring on the with a rag to help get on the inside the coils. Try to get it all cleaned out. There you go. So now it goes in that a lot easier. Works freely now. So now we take this, 
Put a little dab of CRC on it. Like that. I'll grab one of the housings over here. And it came out of this hole right here. And before this one come out at all, remember we had to force it out to get it out. So now it goes right in there like it's supposed to. See a little rust coming out. Go ahead and give it a blow job over here again. I think that comes out through here somewhere. Out the other little hole. And it comes out through this hole here. And the rag in there. Make sure no residues on this side. We already cleaned out earlier. A lot of any lint that might have been in there. We got this again to blow off. Okay, get that good and clean. I'll go back over here. Nice and freely now. That's our spring. There's our plunger. Down. Works nice and freely now. It's a little harder than your thumb, so use a little piece of metal if you want. A little more awkward with metal though, but you can push on it, see? So this probably controls the plunger going back and forth would be a, would be a guess. Maybe it, as it comes up it releases air and makes the valve chain go back and forth, I'm guessing. This might be a reason it doesn't work. These weren't these were bound up and not working. So I'm not sure how the system works, but this obviously has to go back and forth for a reason. So this works a lot easier than it did before. Comes out a lot easier also. And we wiped that plunger off because we didn't clean the o-ring out before, remember? The o-ring's in here. Appears to be clean now. Alright, so this one's working pretty good. So that might be the whole reason why it wasn't working. Don't know why it wasn't working, just know it was having issues. So there's your before and your after. A little five ten minutes of cleaning, like new again. So you don't need to spend a lot of money doing this stuff. You just need to just work. It's called manual labor. Find manual and put them to work. A little common sense goes a long ways on doing this stuff. Pretty stuck up in there. When things are frozen, you just kind of go back and forth and try to get them to move. This one's pretty frozen up, I don't want to move. So I don't want to destroy it, so. It's 
So if you force it and bend the spring, it's no good. So it doesn't want to move. Blowing a little bit. tighter. I had to rotate this way to get it out. See, it just goes both ways now. It wouldn't go both ways before. <laughs> Excuse me. Yeah, this one doesn't go both ways. So it rotates this direction like this to release. This way here doesn't want to go. Okay, so need to rotate that way. It's not going that either way. There it goes. Oh, that's tight. Okay, a little loop in there. There we go. Boy, that was very snug. Spray might be too big to go in here, I don't know. It definitely does not want to go back in there. It came out, but you don't want to go back. Let me blow it off. I'm thinking it's full of some heavy corrosion in there. So what we're going to do is we're going to go over here and see about fixing that problem. Spring is pretty clean. So is the spring the problem or is the part the problem? I don't know. But we have two springs. We have two parts. And we have a caliper. So it's a 309, just under 5 sixteenths. There's your problem, 270. So this is all full of corrosion in here, pretty heavily. You can see how the caliper's digging it up. So it's a 309. So 309 is not 312 and a half, it's 516. 309 is a different size. So let's go over here and see what we got around here we can use to clean this up with. First thing I'm going to do is figure out what 309 is. So 309. There's no 309. You got 302, 312. There's no 309. So 309 is an oddball. So we're just going to take a reamer, stick in here smaller than 5 16 That's probably 5 16 there. So this one will go in there either. one's trying to go in but not happy about it so it's full of a lot of corrosion put a little stick them in there Bigger. 
pull up crap. That's that one. That was 932nd. This is 64, so it's underneath 516. So this should go in here also. A lot of corrosion. No, actually not corrosion, it's a lot of built up residue from the airline. <clears throat> the part itself is anodized, it's not corroded, it's just all the build up that has been blown into here. So I can't The workout. So now being the wrong size, I'm pushing it this way as I'm rotating it flatly, I'm trying to make the hole bigger than what the reamer actually is. I'm trying to cut deeper too. It'll bottom out before it gets before it gets tight. At least it should, but this one here Looks like it's still cutting. My hands are getting tired. So you put a drill press, you can cheat. Looks like that's what it needs. It's too tight right now. I'm getting tired. Try, trying to remove metal, we're only trying to clean grit, so... There, I'm at the bottom of the hole now. Got about 30,000 more grit at the very bottom, I couldn't, couldn't get to go through. It's a pretty deep hole. easy. That's the noise I was trying to get to. Just couldn't get to it. All right, so that's pretty clean there. So now we blow it out. you're looking for, nice and loose. No more gritsy gritsy. So that was 273 I think was uh, the diameter it was down to. It's supposed to be 308 according to the other one. So we're still only at 300. I'm using a caliper here as a tool that it's not made to do. Where's your caliper at when you do that? It's very hard on the surface. That one's already worn. I'm just wearing more of it. Not a good thing to do. Okay, so now... 
There's a spring that wouldn't fit before. Now it goes in there like it's supposed to. That works correctly also. A little more spray on it. There's some more rust coming out. I'm just eating it out a little bit. Pull that out. Still pretty, uh, it's got a lot of brown crap in there, but at least now it works. Okay, which one did we already do? I think it was this one. Yeah, that one looks pretty clean. This one looks pretty dirty. Goes all the way in there pretty good now. Oop. More brown stuff everywhere, so blow it off. It's a laborious geo doing all this. That's why I don't show a cleaning lock. It's, it's a very important process. It takes a lot of time and effort. And everybody thinks it's a grunt labor doing it, but it's how you identify how things are made and how things work. Because now I'm getting an idea of how this thing works a little bit by cleaning it. The other plunger. It's a pre assembly mock up. Make sure it works. Just like before. Appears to be working good. So I'm gonna build up there. I'm gonna pull it off one more time. Okay, looks good. All right, so it looks like that's all cleaned up pretty good. And we got all the plungers cleaned up. All the nuts and bolts and stuff, we'll clean those up as we go. Not a big deal right now. They're external. It's all the internal parts that we need to get clean. So I think they're pretty well cleaned up also now. This is the important part here. I'm not sure how it's supposed to work, but it's 
It's obviously a seal of some type. But the bore on this is nice and clean. This is nice and smooth. And they got pretty good pressure on them. So they go back and forth under a good load. So I think all the stuff is pretty good. All the O-rings appear to be good. Big boy one here. Appears to be halfway decent. Decent to pull with. So this is your pump. So appears to be working smoothly. So we burnished these edges in so they're nice and smooth now. So I think we're good. Okay, I need a little bit of Vaseline to uh, assemble this with small rings on the surfaces. And a little bit on the rubber components. So this here is a rubber seal. Put a little Vaseline on that, it'll make it live a lot longer. And get this out of this and definitely want to lubricate this disc here that goes back and forth, I think. I don't know if it, there's a plunger over here that was inside of there, I took out, had a seal on it. So I'm thinking this might go back and forth to shuttle it. Control the valves a little bit here. Let's see what happens here. It's hard to tell where this is supposed to be. I don't know if this moves or not. Doesn't look like it does anything different if it moves. I think it just goes in and seals. I don't know if it really actually moves anything. Uh, but there's a plunger and seal over here. So that usually means something moves. So I don't know. No instructions. We just figure it out as we go. Okay, well, hopefully I haven't lost any of my O-rings yet. If I did, I'm screwed. I put the one back that goes over there, so I don't lose that one. And I got one left, I think was on one of these housings someplace. I was stuck on one of these holes, which is these. So, I think there's one more O-ring to go someplace. Not sure where it goes. So someplace. So this here. I think that just had this in there, didn't it? Yeah, okay, that just goes in there. <clears throat> That's just a seal. All right. This had a seal in the back of it also. See, I got some petroleum jelly on that or something. So I want to just re-lubricate a couple of these things like that to make them seal better. So, all right, that's it for today. I'll finish this thing up tomorrow, and we'll see if it works. Hopefully it does. There you go.